Good evening, Collectible Connoisseur here. It's been a little while since I've made a video, and so I wanted to uh, show off a different type of aspect of my collection. Usually I kind of show you guys stuff that I'm buying uh, to kind of add to my personal collection, uh, things that come in the mail. Every now and then I'll kind of rummage through and pull out uh, some sort of little subset of my personal collection and talk about it a little bit. But there's another little thing that I like to engage in, kind of in the hobby, um, which is kind of helping to uh, to increase the liquidity in the market. I do a little buying and selling. As I'm out there cruising eBay and other websites uh, to look for cards to add to my collection, I often find cards that I think are underpriced and that I you know, am willing to carry the risk on for a little while in order to sell it at a higher price a little bit later. That's what these are. So here's some that came just recently in the mail, and here's some that I've kind of had piling up that I'm going to get listed on one site or another here very shortly. I'll talk a little bit about that, but let's look at some cards. <clears throat> um, first up, and you're going to notice a, a, a commonality here. I prefer PSA cards. I also like autograph cards. Um, so, uh, I look for deals. This is a 2020 Panini Black Van Jefferson Emerald, uh, subset. You'll notice down here at the bottom, this is number three out of 10 and it's his rookie card. Van Jefferson, it's an interesting case. He's certainly not the Rams receiver that you want to buy nowadays. He's not Cooper Cup. And, uh, when the Rams signed Odell Beckham last year, that kind of pushed Van Jefferson on the back burner. I'm not sure if uh, if he's in the doghouse or if it, you know, I'd have to kind of look in to see what he's still doing. But here's a limited print run, a PSA 9 card, a uh, rookie card, and I picked it up for what I think is a steal. When I buy a card um, that I intend to sell, something that's not ever designed for my personal collection, uh, I look to double up on it. Um not a PSA card, but this is a uh, Topps Archives signature series. This year's issue, 2022. You'll see this one's number 20. I'm sorry, five out of 15. Uh, Goose Gossage autograph card. Um, I'm a sucker for autograph cards. I just think they're cool. Um, I also like um, limited uh, print runs. And you know, I said just a moment ago I, I prefer PSA cards. Encased cards are good with me, too. I don't like uh, buying raw cards that I want to turn around and sell. It's too much that can happen, either in shipment to me, uh, they can be damaged, or if and when I sell them, um, they could be damaged in shipment to the buyer. Or if I use a consignment service, they can be damaged in shipment to the consigner, or buy the consigner and shipment to the buyer. So there, there's too many hands touching the cards. I like them in case. That's how I buy the ones that I intend to sell. Here's just a PSA DNA certified autograph on a, um, what is this? It's a card issued by the Philadelphia Chewing Gum Company. Um, it's a 1990 Swell Gene Upshaw, Pro Football Hall of Fame and uh, autographed. Of course, Gene Upshaw, in, in addition to a Hall of Fame career, was the head of the NFL Players Association Union for a long time. Maybe not an all-star, and maybe not, you know, uh, it's not Goose Gosh, it's not Gene Upshaw. Uh, he's a little better than Van Jefferson. This is Mookie Wilson in uh, Topps Archive Signature Series. This is the 2022 version again. Uh, this card, serial numbered, let's see if we can get it to, there we go, 12 out of 46. And I'll tell you what, Mookie's got a nice autograph, very clean, um, easy to read. Uh, some of the autographs these days are just a couple of initials. Here's a uh, 2019 Panini Prism, Silver Prism, Kobe Bryant. Uh, this is in a PSA 9. When I look for cards to buy, I, I kind of mentioned it. I, I'm looking um, and I'm... I'm what I'm trying to identify are cards that are cheap. I'm basically looking to double what I pay for them. And, you know, I swim in the shallow end of this pool. Here's a 2011 um, Cognac Diamond Anniversary version of Frank Robinson. I love these kind of sparkle cards from this 2011 series. They have Platinum Diamond and here's Cognac Diamond. Um, 
if I can get a hold of PSA graded um, Hall of Famers like like this one, I'm going to buy it almost every time, um, especially at value. And again, I got this one at a price that I think I can turn around and sell it for double what I paid for it. And that's really what I'm looking for is to double up, um, you know, before fees. Uh, the fees do bite into that, but, you know, that's kind of where, um, that, that's my ballpark number is if I'm looking to buy it at 20, I want to sell it for 40. Here's a 2019 uh, Stadium Club, Jose Canseco Chrome Refractor PSA 9. And that's kind of the uh, price range that I swing in is um, I buy and sell, or of the cards that I buy and sell, I do so in kind of a $20 to $80 price range. So if I, I don't really buy cards for 80, um, so I probably buy them from 10 to 40 and look to sell them from 20 to 80. I like this one. This is a 2020 Topps Chrome Update Sapphire Edition Orange. Uh, these are serial numbered. See right there, 19 out of 25. This is a Clayton Kershaw. And I don't want to really, I'm not trying to pump the cards that I'm turning around to sell. Uh, that's not necessarily the purpose of this video. I did kind of want to show you what kind of cards I do like to uh, sell. Uh, this is a 2021 Topps Archives um, signature series. Jim Rice, uh, this is his 1986 Topps card uh, autographed, and this one is serial number 21 of 68. Rice has also got a nice autograph. Uh, I didn't mean to actually grab that card. I'm going to put that one aside. Um, I do sell on a couple different platforms. I sell on eBay, and I sell on ComC. Um, these cards are probably headed for com c but again i'm not trying to pump the cards i'm selling i know it sounds like that um this is a 1999 fleer mystique roger clemens destiny psa 9 i mean if i were trying to pump them i kind of shot myself in the foot by saying hey you know the price that you see on there is double what i paid for it um that's true so just don't go looking for these <laughs> um that's not kind of why we're here. I just like showing off the cards and kind of what I'm involved in. 2018 Upper Deck Trilogy. Um, Elias Pettersson. Elias Pettersson, sorry. Um, here's one, and this one is serial numbered, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Um, seven, 729 out of 999. Here's one where I'm swimming a little bit outside of my lane. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a hockey fan. I probably recognize you know three or four hockey players names uh this is one of them and so i figured if i recognize the name he's got to be a pretty good player got a serial numbered card here in a um psa 9 uh case and uh, so what's the risk well the risk is is that i don't understand the hockey market i don't understand the the value of the card i don't know um you know what other cards in uh, hockey issues are more valuable. So I uh, run some risk on that one, and I don't like to get outside of baseball, football, and then, you know, basketball players of, of great notoriety like Kobe Bryant. This is a 2019 Panini Prism widescreen. Um, it says on the thing FB Prism. I don't, I don't, I get lost on what all these FBs mean, uh, or, or all these uh, variations, um, but it's sparkly, it's neat, and this is one that I will probably send to ComC, and the great thing about ComC is, as a consigner, you know, they take the picture of the card, I don't have to worry about taking a good picture, making a good description, um, I also don't have to deal directly with the customers, so they do uh, order fulfillment. They ship to the customers and or put it in the customer's account. Um, and they also write up the description, so whatever FB Prism uh, represented, uh, ComC will parse that out. Ah, carumba. Here's one that uh, just came in the mail today. Probably the lower end of this, but it's a 1980, 1986. I'll tell you, the price was right. 1986 Donruss highlights Roger Clemens, PSA 9. This uh, commemorates uh, Clemens' 
uh, 20 strikeout night in uh, April, well, April 29th, 1986. And, you know, as far as selling on ComC, I like them for cards in this price range. You know, really, they are going to charge me, uh, well, they're going to charge me a dollar to take in the card. You know, and basically, it's a dollar to for them to identify it properly, a dollar for them to list it on their website. They do cross-list on a number of different websites. Well, not a number of different. Their own, and you can find most of their cards also on eBay. Uh, and then, you know, that same dollar is what, you know, I pay them to take care of the end buyer. This is a pretty cool card. This is a 2005 Upper Deck uh MJ series, so obviously Michael Jordan. Here's one, you know, I normally would not buy a PSA 5. That's a little bit lower grade than I want to deal with. Um, I think the market for these is hard, but I also think this falls right, you know, at that lower edge of what I like to buy and sell. And I think there's a big market. There, it, so I just said it's a hard market for PSA 5s, but I think. Michael Jordan makes it an easier market. And uh, this is a pretty cool card. It's a pretty cool picture. And um, this one also probably head for ComC. So ComC basically charges me a buck. Uh, they charge the customer a buck. And that's kind of a hidden fee, but it's something that's borne by the customer. So, for instance, if I list this Michael Jordan card at $20, um, you know, my fees are going to be a dollar to list it. And then 5% of the sale proceeds. So on $20, uh, that's another dollar uh, in fees that I pay uh, out of the sale proceeds. So it costs me $2 all day. Now there is a kind of a hidden fee that's borne by the customer. So if I list this for 20, it's really being sold for 21. That extra one basically passes out of the, the buyer's pocket and goes to ComC. I paid 10% or, you know, uh, $2 uh, in fees myself, and uh, and that's it. If I list it on eBay, um, this card, you know, eBay would charge me about 12% in fees. Um, and, you know, there's also the cost associated with uh, shipping it. So the extra dollar that, you know, basically com C tax on, you can equate that to shipping fees. So if I sh post this for $20 on eBay, I'm posting it for really like $20 plus $4 shipping. So $24 end cost to the to the customer. And eBay charges me 12% instead of ComC's like 10. Um, you know, and like I said, I sell in kind of a $20 to $80 range. And um, so you can figure out the sliding field fees on the way up. ComC is just a little more economical um, in general. And plus, it's... A big plus for me. I've, I'm not a bad seller. I've never had a bad review on eBay, uh, but I don't like dealing with you know a hassle or drama if the card doesn't get there. I've had to, I've had that lost in the mail, where I had to refund the money. So I'm out the entire cost. Um, you know, if the client's not satisfied and they want to send the card back, I've had that. You know, it just wasn't what they were expecting. They changed their mind. Um, you know, with ComC, they kind of absorb all that. You know, if they're dissatisfied, it doesn't land on me. It lands on ComC. So, I like that. This is 1990 Action Pack Troy Aikman All Madden. You can see up there the All Madden team. It's a neat little variation card. And I think there's um, some gravitas associated with that All Madden designation. It's in a PSA 9. Um, I don't think this is a very obscure card. Uh, but it's kind of neat. Tell you what, they said it's a nine, but look at that top corner. That thing is ye. ye. Um, I wonder if this is a little bit overgraded. You know, again, uh, this will probably go into Com C. So, you know, if a buyer is dissatisfied with their purchase, if they look at that top corner, like I just looked at that top corner and said, yeah, it was graded a nine, but it, you know, it doesn't look like a nine, and I don't want to have it on oh, the back corner on that one. That looks a little like a lot of white. Maybe it's the way this card's manufactured, or maybe it's folded over in the case. I'm not certain, but 
I like the picture. I like the old Madden designation. I think I can sell it, and I think this one will probably go to ComC as well. Um, that's all I got, and that's a little uh, bit of discourse about selling. And, you know, again, not trying to talk my book, and I do uh, myself a little bit of disservice, so I don't hope you're not thinking that I'm kind of pumping these. Um, this is just a representation of the cards that I kind of see in my journey uh, through the Internet. And, uh, you know, if I can buy them at value, I do, so that I can sell them at what I think is a fair price. And that helps to fuel my hobby spend a little bit. Plus, it keeps the wife off the back a little bit. As long as she sees some cards outgoing, she's a lot easier to deal with when cards are incoming into the house. Y'all have a good night.